Hello, welcome to lesson 7 in my scripting series. Today we're looking at parameters and arguments. This is an extension to the previous episode which was about functions. You need to make sure you've watched that or you have knowledge on functions already so that uh, you understand this part of the video. So I'll leave a card in the top right corner and a link in the description to that video. So, at the end of that video, I talked about making functions more dynamic. Right now, we've just got a function and we're telling it to create a part. And every time we call this function, the part generated is going to be exactly the same as the one before. It's going to generate five red parts with the name My Awesome Part and assign all of these properties to them. As you can see, if we run the script, you can see five my awesome parts go into the workspace but what if every time you 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 call this function you wanted to tell the function tell the function tell the script what type of part you want to insert maybe you want to insert a blue part when you call the function here and when you want to call it later on you want to insert a red part so we've got our function right here and all it's doing so far is saving us having to write out um, the this 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 block here to insert a part. We're basically basically just shorting it down to the name of the function. But functions are a lot more powerful than um, just allowing you to save space in your code. What we can do is we can pass some data to this function to tell it how we want our parts be created or whatever you have in your function. We can. Uh, pass some data to this function to determine what actually happens when it executes whatever's inside of it. So we could tell the function when we call it down here, we could tell it that we want the part brick color to be blue or we could tell it to be green or we could give it a number for our transparency. So to do this we use parameters. So um, the parameter is some data which we'll send over so we're going to send it when we call the function down here so firstly we need to tell the function what data to expect okay so we will be sending some data to this function but the function can't just be sent data without knowing what it is so we have to send the data in order and we have to predefine the data that's going to be sent as a variable so just to show you here if I was to generate a part and every time I called this function I wanted to give it a different name then I would want to pass the name you know uh, some text that I want to give to this part so we're gonna tell the script that uh, we're gonna create a parameter of the name of the part okay so Whatever data we send to this function, whenever we call it, we'll put the name that we want that we want this part to be in these brackets here. So if I was to write um, part number one, okay, because this is well, this is the only um, well, actually, this is called a parameter because it's the variable, right, that we've defined, and this is the data that will be sent to the to the to the function. And um, what the function does is when we send data here it substitutes it from and puts it as this variable right so the name variable here will be equal to whatever data is sent so this is our parameter and this is our argument so the parameter is the variable that we are ha have predefined and the argument is what it's going to be equal to so the argument is the data that's getting passed from it's getting passed from this from where we're calling it and it will it will go to this function and name is now equal to part number one because that's what we've told the function to define this variable as. So a parameter is basically a variable inside of a script but it can change and it will be set to whatever you you make your argument as. So your parameter will have the value of the argument when you call it. So in this case the part number one text will get uh, will be made equal to this name parameter variable whatever you'd like to call it and then because name is now equal to part number one instead of saying part dot name equals my awesome part we can just say name and what this means is because we've passed part number one as our argument to this function uh, as the parameter 
called name. Whenever we say name in this function, so part dot name, we, we're just setting it to name. Then it's going the, the name of this part will become part number one because it's the data that we've sent to the function. So if we were to run the game or the script even and check the workspace, you can see it's called part number one. So what's happened here is we've we've called the function for the first time and we've sent our argument of part number one and then when the function gets called then the this parameter name is set to whatever that argument was part number one and then whenever we reference this variable called name or our parameter because it's not actually a variable um, because it's, it's only a part of this function our parameter um, is used down here for when we're setting the parts name and the script now knows that the parameter called name is set to is, is is basically equal to part number one so it will substitute it in basically and the part will then be called part number one but we have a problem it says on the um, fifth fifth line that string was expected and got nil now this is because we have called this function five times but we've only passed an argument to it on the first time so once it's generated our first part and it's moved on to the second line well it's saying okay generate a part it's getting picked up and this function is running and then when we get to the parameters well we haven't actually supplied an argument so we are saying that name is currently equal to nothing because we've passed no argument to it we've passed no data from when we're calling the function to um, to when it gets up here it's just going to be nothing because we haven't passed an argument so name is going to be nil and when you say nil nil basically means nothing okay so if I was to say print down in the command bar if I was to print nil you just get nil okay if I was to print Sorry, not zero. Um, if I was to make a variable and call it, and we won't assign it to anything, and then we print my variable, it's equal to nil because it's not assigned to anything. It's not equal to anything. So because we have not passed an argument, it is therefore a nil value. So when it's got to line five in this function and it's trying to set the part's name to nothing, well, you can't set it to nothing, so it's going to give us an error. So if I was just to fill this in, with more arguments each time we run the function we should get five parts uh, all with different names and they all should be these names here so let's run it and there we go so the names of our parts in the workspace now correspond to the names or the text that we passed as arguments to these functions so Basically, we predefine the data that's going to be sent to the function as parameters so that we know what will, what will get sent. And then when we're calling the function, we can pass arguments to those parameters so that the parameters, that their value is equal to whatever we send, basically. So think of parameters, arguments. Parameters are the predefined value that currently have that have no value we're just giving them a name because obviously um, if you if you think about it if the game was was running right because the function gets defined first we haven't actually passed any data to it yet so we have to have like a placeholder value and in this case we, it's our parameter name right and then when we do have the, the value to get inserted we well it doesn't actually substitute because the, the 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 name parameter will be equal to something like a variable is equal to something but this data this argument um, basically takes its place and uh, whatever name is equal to becomes the parts name so that might be a bit confusing to you um, it's definitely a, a step up from what we've been doing previously but just think about it as it's you know data that we're gonna pass to a function when we run it because we don't want 
well, it's, it's, it's unlikely that you define a function and you're going to be repeating the same code over and over again. You're going to want to do things differently each time you run the function, right? So, for example, um, if you had a intermission script in your game and you maybe wanted the timer, the time of the intermission to be different each round or you had different round types say like a, a murder mystery round and then a race round and then they both had timers and the race round lasted for 60 seconds but the murder mystery lasted for 50 seconds you could pass the, the time of the round to a function and then the countdown clock could could end when when the time is up basically so that's an example use of parameters um, so they're very useful and they can be used to pass data to a function so that they're dynamic and it's not the same code being repeated over and over again. So uh, next thing about parameters is that you can have multiple parameters for one function although you have to separate them with a comma each time you add a new one. So for example you could have name, you could have um, anchored, by the way you can call them whatever you like, you could say is anchored, you could call it um, param2, you could call it burger, it's totally up to you, but if you start naming things weirdly, you might forget what each one is, what, what value gets passed to them, so I would keep them, um, you know, rememberable and, and relevant, so in this case, we'll just call it is anchored, uh, we can do reflectance, and that's enough for now. So we now need to um, replace the current values we have with their parameters. So part.anchored is no longer going to be true. It's going to be whatever data we pass to the function in our is anchored parameter. So because um, parameters, sorry, arguments can change, right? So in we could call the function and we could say anchored is true and then we could call it again later on and say it's false we can't just have it set to true we have to we have to have a our parameter so that it can be variable so so that it can change so um, we put our is anchored parameter there and now we just do the same thing again for our reflectance we don't want the reflectance to be 0 0.6 every time we call this function so we're going to paste our reflectance parameter and then we can write to that uh, parameter we can pass our arguments to it so let's add a comma so we so as i've said you can have multiple parameters you can have multiple arguments as well when you're calling a function you just have to separate them with a comma so that we know which one is which. So you have to do it in the same order as well. So if you put the name first as in your parameters, if you put the name first, then you're doing the anchored, then you're doing the reflectance. You couldn't put the reflectance value first and then the name. You'd have to do it in the same order. Otherwise, you're going to be writing the the wrong arguments to the wrong parameters. So the name goes first as we've defined it, and then is anchored. So do we want anchored to be true or false? I'm going to say uh, false and reflectance let's make it set to one okay let's just delete these uh, lines here what that should do is create a part let's give it a different name we'll call it hamburger so it should create a part called hamburger it should then set its anchored property to false so it falls to the ground and then its reflectance property will be set to one there we go so what's happened is it's fallen to the ground uh, its can collide property is equal to false, so it's not collided with the base plate, so it's fallen straight through. Let's just change that to true and try this again. So there we go, our part has been inserted, and hamburger, that's its name, can collide is set to true of course, but anchored is set to false, uh, because we said we set the value of is anchored to be false, and whenever the script looks up that parameter, it will know that we passed this argument of false to it. So whenever we say is anchored, we know it will be false. And just to prove it to you, if I was to then change it to true, but not touch the function at all, you can see it stays in the air. So all we're doing is we are passing some data to this function, and that function is applying it to the properties of this part. So that is how parameters and arguments work. Now, I'm just going to show you one more example. Let's just create another function called print text. 
okay so this function I wanted to print some text now because every time I run this function I want it to print some different text we're gonna do print but instead of writing some text in a string I'm going to print out the value of a parameter and the parameter that I'm going to use we're going to pass some text to it so we can call it whatever we want so I'm going to call it string to print just we'll make sure to print that parameter and then when we call this function print text we need to supply the function with some text to print out so we can just send in our argument because we need an argument because we've got a parameter so the value that I'm going to send to this parameter is going to be some text so it's going to be a string and we can just put a message in there so hello there this is Alvin Blocks if I print that out it says in the output hello there this is Alvin Blocks and what we can do is we can keep doing print text we can keep running the same function but we can keep passing different messages each time this is a message run it again and we have two messages printed out and you can see we're calling the same function but each time we call the function it's printing something different because we're passing a different value to our function to our parameter each time so it allows you to call your function at different times but also you can print different messages from the same function by using parameters by sending the data um, as an argument well uh, to this parameter and then you can print the parameter out so that it can be dynamic so that you can you can use a function to save time when having to write out the same code but you can send messages uh, well, not messages you can send data to that function so that so that you don't get the same result from that function every single time so just to finish off with um, functions they do the same code over and over but each time you run a function you may want it to do something or make something different so in our example make it a part with different properties and again as we've just done printing a message but obviously each time we run it we don't want to print the same message so we can pass a parameter to it um, to print a different message every single time that may be a bit confusing it was definitely a longer tutorial than normal uh, but definitely uh, really really important information which you need to know um, we will be using parameters and functions uh, a lot more in future videos so if you think that this is a bit pointless um, it will all make sense very very soon although if you don't understand um, I will link some useful resources in the description uh, and also we will probably be going over these in a future tutorial as well so thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please do head on to the next one uh, by clicking the thumbnail on the right of your screen don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the blue Alvin blocks logo in the middle of the screen don't forget to like subscribe and comment if you have any questions I will try my best to get back to you thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one